So as an M1 MacBook Air user, I recently got myself the 15 inch MacBook Air to check out and possibly upgrade to. So for those planning to do the same, or of course, cross shopping between these two Macs, I thought I'd compare these. So by far the biggest change between these two MacBooks is the design. In fact, this is probably the biggest selling point of the M2s because yes, they do look gorgeous and makes the M1 Air look relatively ancient in comparison. The M2 has really fit the Air branding better because the M1 version actually is thicker than the base MacBook Pro. So yes, the much thinner design of these new models are very nice. The rounder corners also make a difference since the sharper corners on the older M model did scratch and dent pretty easily. And for those wondering, does the additional weight of the 15 inch make a massive difference? Honestly, no, I can gladly put up with the slight increase in the overall weight of the machine for the bigger display, which of course I'll get to. By the way, smaller bezels are also appreciated. I do also forget the notch is there most of the time and also the larger function row on this is quite an underrated change with these new MacBooks since it does make the keys and the Touch ID sensor much easier to reach and press. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this, it would be appreciated. The new design's not perfect though, because after using both the 13 inch and this new 15 inch, I do miss the wedge to be honest. It does make the typing experience on the old Air that much better and also it was a unique design element that separated the Air from the rest of the range. So it's sad the wedge is dead. And I also want to give the M1 Air some fair credit because this design is still very premium and for many of you guys coming from older laptops there is still a lot to like here particularly with the builds. It's a design that debuted back in 2018 but it still looks pretty fresh for the most part. So let's now move on to the performance and if we compare the benchmarks of these two machines we can see M2's a pretty minor upgrade over M1. This really goes to show how good M1 was because even after three years of this being on the market, regular usage with these machines are very similar for the most part and I've not massively picked up on anything different performance wise. Now to be fair, the encoders and decoders M2 has when exporting videos is pretty nice, but that's really the only difference I've picked up on. Apart from that, they're basically the same. And by the way, for those wondering about throttling with these two fanless Macs, for my use, which is slightly above the average consumer, these have had no performance issues. And I really appreciate the fanless design, to be honest, especially when I'm editing, I'm glad there is no stupid fan in the background. So yes, no thermal throttling whatsoever. And also if you're wondering if the 24 gig option on the M2 makes a difference, I personally doubt it. Now I would upgrade to 16 gigs if possible because that could help future proof the machine. But even with this eight gig base version, I've had no RAM issues on the 15 inch. I've been pushing this machine with multiple Safari tabs and also Final Cut running at the same time. Really the 24 gig option makes no sense because if you're maxing the air out, I think you're better off just getting the Pro instead. So ultimately get M2 if you want slightly longer support, but don't expect huge performance upgrades over M1. If you're solely looking for that, wait for M3 because that's gonna be based on three nanometers. Anyways, back to the comparison, let's talk about the display and I'll be honest guys, apart from it being bigger, the 15 inch has a very similar display to the older M1. Both are LCD though the 15 inch does have slightly better brightness, but this does not make a massive difference indoors. And both also have True Tone and P3 supports now the 15 inch being so similar to the M1 Air is not a bad thing ultimately because the M1 Air has a terrific panel I've had no issues with and so now I get that amazing display with a new larger size and it's perfect. Because last year when testing the 13 inch, I noted the increase from 13.3 inches to 13.6 inches did not make that much of a difference and I wasn't really gaining any additional real estate. I'm happy to say though that as one expects, the 15.3 inch panel on this new machine does make a difference, particularly for editing, but also for watching content on this and also multitasking because split screening on this is way nicer. And because it's still an air, you're not compromising a lot weight wise. It's still pretty compact and really gives you the best of both worlds. Moving on to the camera mics and speakers, I would say there's only an upgrade in one of these departments. Both have rock solid mics and the webcam on the 15 inch is 1080p but to be honest 
it does not make that much of a difference. The M1's webcam is still pretty good, however the speakers are very impressive on the 15 inch. This has six of them with what Apple calls force cancelling woofers, and yes I do pick up on the sound being fuller with the 15 inch, and it's a treat to kick back and watch movies on this, especially with the larger display. This will definitely be a big selling point for the 15 inch, and here's a sample for you guys. And here's a webcam test for you guys. I should sound pretty good. The visuals should be decent enough. So yeah, let me know how this is. And here's the M1's webcam in comparison. Also forgot to mention the 15 inch does have spatial audio support, which does make a difference when using AirPods. So that's another reason why content consumption on the 15 inch is much better. Keyboard wise, as I said, I do like the larger function row, but this is essentially the same Magic Keyboard M1 has, and so both are the gold standard when it comes to keyboards, and the same goes for the trackpads. And in case you're wondering if Touch ID is faster with the 15 inch, that's not the case. Though to be fair, I had no issues with the scanner on the M1. Now connectivity wise, one would expect the newer 15 inch to have Wi-Fi 6C, but that's surprisingly not the case. However, this does get Bluetooth 5.3 compared to 5 on the M1. Now, does this make a realistic difference? Honestly, no, both are pretty solid. I've seen no differences connectivity wise. Coming to ports, I think the big upgrade with the 15 inch is honestly MagSafe because with the M1 Air 2 ports can be a tad limiting at times. And so now I can charge my Mac separately with the MagSafe ports and then use the two Thunderbolt ports for connecting peripherals, which is pretty nice. Also, if you get the 70 watt brick, this does charge faster than M1. But to be honest, I don't care about fast charging because the M1 has never died on me in the first place. And so I usually charge it overnight and that's going to be the same with the 15 inch. And that conveniently brings me on to battery life with these Macs because in my testing the 15 inch and the M1 Air were performing pretty similar which does suck I can't lie guys. Because while I'm sure 18 hours of endurance is going to be plenty good for most consumers, I was hoping the 15 inch with its bigger chassis could give us battery life similar to the 16 inch, but if I were to guess, A Apple could not give us a big enough battery inside because it's so thin, but also of course, they don't want this cannibalizing the 16 inch. If you want the best battery life, they're gonna upsell you to that and make more cash. Though I do wanna reiterate guys, for those coming from older Intel Macs, this will be insane endurance. For example, I was editing on this for two hours and it went from 100% to 87%, which is incredible because back in the Intel days, I would be close to dead by the time I finish editing CS. I do want to reiterate guys, the battery life is very good. I was just hoping the bigger size would result in better battery life. And actually, I do want to mention after using the M1F for close to three years, the battery health is 88%, and so as one expects, the battery life has dropped a little. This again is why I was praying for better battery life on the 15 inch to begin with. If it offered 20 hours of battery life out of the box, then it would have fed better than the M1. That's not a massive issue ultimately though, because this M1 Air is actually still pretty good endurance wise, and so ultimately battery life is a non-issue for both these Macs. Most are going to love this aspect about these Apple Silicon Macs. So that's basically everything guys. And for those cross shopping between these, pricing plays a big factor because while the 15 inch is a very nice product that has plenty of nice upgrades, it's also a lot more expensive. Because the great thing about the M1 Air being nearly three years old is that the price has come down significantly. Base models go for as low as $800 or even $700 nowadays. And so you can't argue with the value that offers when the 15 inch retails for $1,300. And things get worse outside of the US because in the UK, new Macs have seen substantial increases. And so the 15 inch is actually 1,400 pounds. And that is a lot more than the M1 that of course can be found for under 900 pounds. While I do like the larger panel the 15 inch has, I don't think it does enough to justify getting this, 
over the M1 Air because the M1 has the basics covered of a great computer. The battery life is very awesome. It's got blazing fast performance and it's super reliable. So yeah, basically the 15 inch does not have must have features that sways me towards it. I can still easily go back to the M1 and it's still good enough for most consumers in 2023. And I'm sure many students are planning to buy these Macs and so especially for them, I would recommend getting the M1 Air instead and save some cash and maybe put that towards external storage or a base iPad to accompany this. So that's my advice for new buyers, but what about for consumers like myself, who of course already have the M1 Air and want to upgrade? And in your case, if you can sell the M1 Air for a good price, I think it could be worth getting the 15 inch for the bigger display and speakers. But honestly, if you can wait for the M3 MacBooks, they should offer much better performance. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching.